So, thank you. Can you? Yes, I hope you can hear me. So, um, thank you very much. I'm I'm going to present on behalf of a larger team of Draco related people, and today there's also a poster. So, if you want to meet more of us, then please join us at poster 16 for if you have questions regarding Draco. Today I'm going to talk about a more specific topic and something that we are uh, prototyping in the course of a uh, research EU-funded research project. You can access the slides uh, under this link, Dockerizing Dracor, bitly.org, bit Dockerizing Dracor, and you can also click on uh, several things in this presentation. So if you want to go directly to the code, um, you can do that via this presentation link. Reproducibility, or to first choose the broader term, repeatable research, has since the so-called reproducibility crisis been a much discussed topic, especially in the empirical and technical sciences. Whereas repetitive research has traditionally played a rather marginal role in the humanities, for computational humanities, it is of relevance in various ways. One might think of the re-implementation of methods and scripts in new research projects, of the re-analysis of data sets with optimized tools, or of the exact reproduction of analysis in the course of scientific quality assurance, for example, in peer review. Overall, however, there is still a lack of a culture of repetitive research on the one hand, and on the other hand of solutions that are as low threshold as possible from a technical point of view. Accordingly, James O'Sullivan stated in 2019, the humanities have a reproducibility problem. In her widely discussed critique of computational liter literary studies, Nanda also reported that in several cases, it was not possible to reproduce the results of research in this field. Yet the discussions have shown that many aspects of Da's argumentation are problematic. However, in a recent preprint, Christoph Schoch has noted uh, that Da nevertheless points to, and I quote, some serious and relevant challenges for the field of CLS. Notably, the difficulty to reproduce work in this field, starting with issues of access to data and code, but also concerning questions of lacking reporting standards, limited scholarly recognition, and missing community commitment and capacity that would all be needed to foster a culture of repetitive research in computational literary studies and beyond. In the EU-funded project, Computational Literary Studies Infrastructure, CLS Infra for short, we seek to develop solutions to some of the current challenges of literary studies in the digital age, including the question of reproducibility of CLS research. Within CLS Infra, in our Potsdam and Berlin team, uh, we are working on, in work package seven, entitled Building the Ecosystem of and for Programmable Corpora. By the way, if you're interested in the concept of Programmable Corpora, we recently uh, published a report uh, and you can read more about it in this report that is linked on the slides. In this report, we define programmable corpora as corpora that expose an open, transparently documented, and at least partly research-driven API to make text machine actionable. A task in our work package is dedicated, um, is dedicated to the technical stability of APIs and programmable corpora with the goal of developing solutions for versioning both data and APIs. The overall goal is to increase the reproducibility of CLS research. To this end, we have prototypically implemented a technical workflow, which we will report on today. While our approach is meant to make different types of repetitive research possible, such as the reanalysis of data or the reinterpretation of results, our focus is, and we use the terminology of Christoph Schoch, on making research in CLS replicable. The term replication of research, Schoch states, designates practices of repetitive research in which the research question, the data set, and the method of analysis of the repeating study are all identical to the original study. Yet replication brings with it significant challenges. The requirements for enabling replication of research, Schoch continues, are quite high, 
as the complete data set and all the code needs to be available in, fo in a form that allows running the code without modifications or re-implementations. In the following, we will present our approach for conducting CLS research with DRACOR. Our approach is inspired by the concept of research artifacts from computer science, which is described by Arvan et al. as self-contained packages that contain everything needed to reproduce results reported in a paper, and which are also typically self-executable, meaning that they are packaged within a virtual machine or within a container. Our prototypical implementation is based on the Drama Corpora platform Dracor, which we have been building for several years now. Dracor follows the concept of programmable corpora and provides corpora and APIs for over 3,000 of dramas from European literary history and beyond. In an experiment, we set ourselves the challenge of making a network analytic study, which we conducted for a paper publication as fully replicable as possible. Central to our approach is the use of Docker for containerization. So the challenge is Dockerizing Dracor. The containerization technology Docker is widely used in the IT industry because it can speed up development cycles and can reduce overhead when deploying applications. Especially in the field of DevOps, Dev for development and Ops for operations, which means the processes that are necessary to have an application run on a server, the importance of communication between the development and the operations team is considered highly important. Thus, Docker workflows have been introduced. They do not only streamline communication processes, they also shift the responsibility of handling software dependencies to the development team. Docker enables people actually writing the application to specify the environment in which the software should be run. There are a couple of key components to such workflows. The so-called Docker file is a meaningful um, and executable form of documentation. It contains the steps necessary to build a highly portable, self-contained digital artifact, a Docker image. These images can be easily deployed on a designated infrastructure as Docker containers. And you might wonder, what does this all have to do with the field of computational literary studies? Because in CLS research projects, we will rarely find teams of development and operation professionals that are in need of communicating better. But we would like to argue that still the attempt of reproducing research could be framed in a similar sense. On one hand, we have an individual researcher or a team of researchers that produces a study. In our analogy, these are the developers. The product, a study, relies on some application or script that operates on data. And on the other hand, we have researchers wanting to reproduce or verify the results um, by running a script or uh, analyzing data. And similar to operations professionals, that have to deploy someone else's application on a server. It becomes evident that some hurdles in the process of reproducing research exist due to a lack of clear communication on how to run analysis scripts and a tendency to offload the responsibility of setting up an environment in which the analysis could be executed to the reproducing party. A containerized research environment might circumvent these problems. Instead of claiming that scripts work, at least of today, on the machine of the developing researcher, as for example Andrew Piper writes in his foreword to his book Enamorations, um, it would be possible when employing container technology to guarantee instead that a container created from an image containing a runnable self-contained research environment can be rerun. This would allow for reproduction of the study Instead of saying, the analysis was runnable on my machine when writing the paper and just publishing the code in a GitHub repository, in addition, in, uh, according to our method, a researcher could provide a runnable research artifact alongside the study that would include all the dependencies necessary to run the scripts. When using Docker, this could be one or more images this would, this, that would allow to recreate the research environment the study was conducted in. 
On a side note, and because some might argue that by embracing a proprietary technology, we have to state that Linux containers, and this is Docker, what Docker is as its core, as a technology, is around since 2008. Docker was only introduced in 2013, and the company Docker Incorporated actively promoted the Open Container Initiative, um, which was started in 2015. It developed a vendor agnostic specification of containers and images that was released in 2017, to which the current Docker implementation adheres. This, of course, is still doesn't guarantee that Docker containers will be around forever, but at least a total lock-in into a certain proprietary technology is circumvented. We have seen what the challenges in repeating research could be and looked into Docker as a possible means of providing self-contained runnable research artifacts. Next, I'm going to report on our experiment in making a CLS study replicable by using Docker technology. We exemplify the benefits of a Docker-based research workflow by referring to our study detecting small words in a corpus of thousands of theater plays. In this study, we tested different operationalizations of the so-called small word concept based on a multilingual, very big drama corpus. Vibidracor, as we are calling it, contains almost 3,000 theater plays. The corpora available on the Dracor platform are living corpora, which basically means we are still adding more plays, and we added a new corpus yesterday, the Ukrainian drama corpus, so come to the poster and check this out. But this poses an additional challenge for reproducing our study. Furthermore, in our analysis, our analysis script, which is written in R, retrieves metadata and network metrics directly from the REST API of the programmable corpus. Thus, we had to devise a way of not only stabilizing the data, meaning the corpus, but also the API as a central infrastructural component. Draco provides Docker images for its services, which are at its core the API, a front end, a metric service, and a triple store. The ready made Docker images can be used to set up a local Draco environment. So there are these Docker images. For Vibidracore, we devised a workflow that spins up a Docker container from a versioned bare image of the Draco database and ingest data of the plays pulled from specified GitHub commits using a Python script. We then committed this container with Docker commit to create a ready-to-use track Docker image of the populated database and API. Because the build process is modular and documented in a Docker file, it is also possible to quickly change the API's base image or the composition of the corpus by simply editing a file that controls which place from which repositories at which state are included. In a second step, we also dockerized the research environment. A Docker container running RStudio to which we added our analysis script. The preparation of this image is documented in a Docker file, which you can see on the slide. As a base image, we used an image of the Rocker project. We also used the comet, uh, Docker commit to freeze the state of our system and published all images. We call this state the pre-analysis state, which is documented in a Docker Compose file. And after we ran the analysis, we again created an image of the RStudio container with the command Docker commit, thus turning it into a Docker image, which basically froze the state of the research environment after the R script was run. The image of this post-analysis state was also published on the Docker Hub repository. It allows for inspection and verification of the results of our study in the exact same environment that we used. By having these images representing two moments in the course of our analysis, we not only make our analysis transparent, we also allow for different scenarios of repeating research. Starting an environment with the Docker Compose file that documents the pre-analysis state would allow a researcher to exactly repeat our analysis by rerunning the script on the exact same data. But also other scenarios of repeating research, same code, different data, or different code, same data, could be implemented easily. 
To give an example, a researcher could adapt the Jupyter notebook we used to assemble Vibidra core and create an image of the local corpus container the same way we did. By changing only a single line in the Docker Compose file, documenting the pre-analysis state, it would be possible to start the whole system with these different data. For running, our, for running the analysis, he, he or she could till, still take uh, the container derived from our RStudio image and thus run the analysis the exact same way we did, but on different data. We are aware that the presented workflow is still quite complex. It involves with regards to assembling the corpus and creating the Docker containers. This was also pointed out by our reviewers, and as we showed, there are many steps involved to set up the locally running database, create a bare container with database and API, populate it with the data and conduct the analysis, create several Docker images, and ultimately publish them in a repository, for example, on Docker Hub. There is also the need to create the Docker Compose files that specify which system components are needed to recreate the whole environment. Uh, we are aware that there is still a lot of work to be done to make the whole process more user-friendly if we want users of Draco to adopt this mode of repeatable research. And we already took some steps into this direction by developing a Python package. Uh, stable Draco, as we are calling it, makes the setting up of local Draco instances and populating them with data easier by somewhat hiding the complexity of the Docker and Docker Compose commands. There is no real need for a client managing containers and images because this can be done with Docker Desktop. But there is need of setting up corpora and handling the creation of images of the infrastructure components. The following slides show the use of the client we are developing used in a Jupyter notebook. The package can be built and installed from the repository. And after initializing a stable core instance, the infrastructure can be started with a single command. If a user does not specify any parameters, uh, like pointing to a designated custom local Docker Compose file, the script fetches a configuration of the system specified by a Docker file from our repository and starts the defined containers. The package also supports setting up local custom corpora, either by copying a corpus or parts thereof from any running Draco system. So this is an empty Draco system. And this is the, 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 the single line that copies a corpus from the live system to the local machine. This is also po it is also possible to directly add TI files from the local file system, which allows a user to even use the Draco environment with data not published on Draco.org or a public GitHub repository. When adding data to a local Docker container with the help of the package stable Dracor, the program keeps track of the constitution of the corpora and its sources. The next slides show how a workflow, we dis how, uh, how a workflow that we described before with VB Dracor would look like with help of the client. We show the creation of a corpus derived from multiple sources. We can add a corpus from GitHub from a GitHub repository. This method of adding data allows to specify the state of the data in the corpus compilation process at a given point in time by referring to a single GitHub commit. Because Draco corpora are living corpora, as I said, it is not guaranteed that the corpora that are published on the web platform do not change at all. Therefore, it would, yeah, it would not be a good idea to base research aiming at being repeatable at the data in the live system. The client keeps track of the whole configuration of the system. This includes the versions of the microservices used and the corpora loaded. The state of the corpus is identified by a timestamp, and if the source is a GitHub repository, the commit. This log can be output as a manifest, which should allow recreating the system even if no Docker image is available. It will also allow a user to unambiguously identify the exact data that was used in a study. If someone would not or did not, could not use Docker, the manifest alone would still be sufficient uh, as a sufficient source to retrieve the files used if they come from a corpus on GitHub. 
Of course, if the local files are used, this does not help, but at least it makes this circumstance transparent. StableDoc Core supports creating a Docker image from a populated database container. With the original workflow, it was necessary to do this in the terminal. This is quite fast to do it, so it's a single line of code to create the container. And what we also do with this, um, we are attaching the information, um, information from the manifest directly to the Docker image by decomposing the manifest into Docker labels which are then attached to the image. So by taking the image labels, it is possible to simply recreate the manifest and vice versa. So we can compose, decompose the manifest into Docker labels and reconvert uh, the image labels back into a manifest. This way we are attaching the information about the digital research artifact directly to it and not separating it as we did in the first version of our workflow by pointing to an external script. This way we created a fully conficient self-contained digital research artifact. Um, we hope, uh, we know that the, the research workflow is quite uh, specific to Dracor, but we still hope that this workflow can inspire others to help with creating digital research artifacts that allow for repeatable research. And at least for research done with Docker, uh, with Dracor, uh, we hope that the stable Dracor client will help people to make repeatable research, creating repeatable research easier. Thank you.